Welcome to News Talk with Simone Vani at the International News Channel. In the early parts of the year, Frances Hogan left her job at Facebook with thousands of documents demonstrating the social harms caused by the social media giant. The Facebook whistleblower sifted through the company's internal social network and took pictures of content that alarmed her. These documents, named the Facebook Papers, were subsequently analyzed and reported by over a dozen news outlets. This is not the first time that the tech giant has come under fire for being misleading, dishonest, and potentially harming their users. Among the discoveries in the Facebook Papers was the role that Facebook played in the January 6th riot at Capitol Hill, the spaces for violence, hate speech, and political polarization that prospered on the site, and the damaging mental health implications of the site on children. Joining me today is my fellow Inc. TV co-host, Ava Blackwell, to discuss these Facebook papers. Hello, Ava. Hi, Simone. Welcome back. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Welcome back to you, too. Thank you. <laughs> so this morning, Facebook announced that they will be rebranding themselves, starting with their name, which they changed to Meta. What do you think that's going to do? Well, they have been wanting to join the Meta universe. That's what has been circulating since the rumor uh, came about that they were changing their name. Mm -hmm. um, they want to become an even bigger tech conglomerate, it seems. They want to evolve and start to mesh the world of physical and digital, like kind of branch out more, even more than they already are into those two worlds. So yeah. it seems like a clear break from the past. Um, and it seems to be akin to what Google did in 2015 when they changed their name from Google to Alphabet. Mm. Yeah. But it's still known as Google. So yeah, I, think I it's wonder. the overarching company. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on you there. Okay. It's, it's the overarching company, huh. as far as I understand, mm. uh, that now owns everything because Google owns everything. a lot <laughs> under the umbrella of Alphabet. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. I, I believe it's the same with Facebook. I don't think we're going to see a change. Could be wrong. I, 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 I know that there's not a lot of information out there yet, but I don't think we're going to be seeing a change in the actual like Facebook interface that yeah. we use every day. It's just going to be the new company logo yes, is right, Meta. Yeah. Yeah, can you imagine trying to be like, oh, I posted something on Meta today instead of Facebook? It's kind of cool. It, it might be confusing too, though. I mean, launch, launch a new thing. L uh, true. Uh, whatever. It might just seem like a whole new platform, though, too. Yeah. I wonder if, they, if they're, if they're rebranding themselves, what if they just change everything? Well, maybe the they might be meshing because they own, what do they own? They own WhatsApp, Instagram, Instagram uh, yeah, Oculus, there's a lot. The, the VR platform. Yeah, yeah. They own Facebook, so they might be meshing a lot of them into one. We yeah. See. Like we've already seen with Messenger on, uh, for a lot of us Instagram, Facebook mm. users. Oh, yeah they, yeah. they mix that together, too. Yeah. Very confusing. Very I'm confusing. not sure. Very confusing. Very confusing. <laughs> Very confusing. But, so in your opinion also, so does Facebook prioritize profit over people and societal good? Yes, they're a business. Most businesses do. And I think it's up to the user and to other governing bodies to put pressure on businesses to prioritize societal good in order to maintain their clientele. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, most. I mean, most multinationals have a humanitarian or a charitable branch that mm. they utilize at, um, for, you know, A, tax write-offs, but also mm. for optics. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it is a business, and we They're can't... They're looking to make profit somewhere or somehow. Exactly. Yeah. Fair enough. So, in the Facebook papers that were released and analyzed by journalists, numerous concern came to light regarding the use of the platform to promote violence. Eva, I don't know if you know this, but it was also said that a Mexican drug cartel was reportedly using these platforms to recruit members. And it was posting content on Facebook-owned Instagram, as we just mentioned, mm -hmm. showing shootings and beheadings. So Facebook has also been criticized for providing a platform to Trump, leading to violence that happened on Capitol Hill in January, as we all know. So should Facebook be responsible for the content that the users publish? Yeah, this is a, this is a complicated question. I mean, at first, the knee-jerk reaction is to say, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but then you get into the details of it, and mm. you understand what a large job that is. Now. Personally, I believe that they should be held responsible. Okay. Maybe not fully, but there should be things in place a little bit more than, than what is already in place because they already actively moderate their platform. We know that. We know that from having simple conversations <laughs> and then suddenly it comes, it comes up in your ads. Targeted you, ads. You understand that they're already actively moderating. Um, and you see if, if a woman posts something, for example, with too much of her areola showing, it's immediately censored and 
those kinds of yeah. things are censored, but it seems to be there's this vast disparity mm. in terms of violence and, and cyberbullying and things that go unchecked and unpoliced mm. uh, online, which I think the platforms themselves and the users would benefit from a little bit more stringent um, policing on it. Mm. Uh, but you have to toe that line so carefully because where does it start to lead into censorship? Yeah. And, and an impeachment on freedom of speech. Mm, you know? True. We talked so about this last week too. We did. You, right? Yeah. That it, it's, it's a very fine line and who decides where the line is at this point? Yes. And yeah. I, I don't know what the solution is. Is that, is that government to government working together with Facebook, like letting them know what might be triggering or targeted in their countries and their demographics. Mm. The reason I think that Facebook should and and the subsidiary companies should be held so responsible is because they have this incredible power to change the global opinion and mindsets of people with the click of a button. Mm. It's, sure. it's different than telephone companies, say because it's just user to user. I pick up the phone, I talk to you, I change your opinion. Yeah. It doesn't require so much policing. And it's easier for police to like tap into that. Tap into that but, too, right? Yeah. But honestly, somebody with 6.4 million followers or 64 million followers, they post something, something gets out, and then it's everywhere mm. within minutes. You I know? think the term is viral these days? Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> viral, but like, yeah, just yeah, the implications no. and the consequences are much more drastic. Yeah. Speaking of which, it was also found that Facebook has a negative effect on the mental well being of teenage girls. Mm -hmm. So, is it the responsibility of Facebook to remedy these damaging effects on the mental well being of its users, in general users, maybe? Yeah, I certainly think it's best practice, absolutely. Okay. And um, morals aside, from a moral standpoint, absolutely, I think so. But just from a business standpoint, I think that it is best optics for them to be educating and helping their members that are known to be vulnerable. Any business would understand that. Yeah. Um, Instagram was making an effort following, like, with certain hashtags, if you followed, they give you a little warning, being like, this might not be... Have you ever yeah. seen that come yeah. up if you've tried to follow certain hashtags? I did it. I did. It did make me stop and think twice because I didn't even think about it that way. But then I forget what hashtag it was. It was something related to fitness. Mm. And I fitness. was fitness. Yeah, because I do a lot of fitness I'm, no, stuff. No, no, I, I'm just but surprised that it's a fitness thing that is asking you to. But it was like a kind of a sub thing about uh, diet and health and nutrition. Huh. And I was following a lot of them because I like to eat healthy and stuff. But there was one that came up that was like, uh, this might not be, it was uh, akin to like, this might not yeah. be the best for your mental health to follow. And I was huh. like, oh, interesting. Um, it was something about being thin. You know ah. what I mean? Yeah, so it was it was relating related to body Related to image. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But from, from my perspective, I was coming at it from a fitness standpoint, not mm. the perspective yeah, of yeah. A, a teenage girl. But had I been a teenage yeah. girl, I remember. It would have been, been like different. 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah it would have yeah, been different. Exactly. Yeah. So speaking of censorship and just harmful content in general, does Facebook do a good job of removing it? And I'm not sure how you know about it, but could they be better at it too? Uh, well, I don't think they do a good enough job of removing certain things, mm. uh, like especially with political ideologies. I mm, don't think true. that they do a good enough job of removing like very um, extreme views that could be detrimental to people and quite mm. violent. To be frank, well, I mean we we found that with the the cartel. Yeah, it's not necessarily political, but like with yeah, violence. or even just the Capitol Hill situation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They seem to be very sensitive to anything. Um, related to pornography they'll mm. remove that and they're immediately they're immediately and almost too sensitive to that where it feels like i know a lot of my friends and my circles uh, particularly are um a lot of photographers and models and stuff and a lot of their content gets um censored because there's too much of an areola showing or whatever and it's flagged as pornography and taken down mm. and i think that that they're a little bit too quick on the trigger for that one, but mm. not enough on um, political ideologies. I guess they just need some more sort of wavelength, not wavelength, but just in broad perspective of seeing what to be censored and what not to be censored. Exactly. And I think we were talking about this with last week too with Instagram and them having to monitor it mm -hmm. or flagging certain words or terms or yes. for that matter. So yes. Maybe yeah. something like that then. But Facebook is losing trust from users as well as their own staff, as we saw with Francis. 
So what do you think is making the company untrustworthy today? Well, they do have a reputation for delay, deny, and deflect. They haven't mm. really taken a lot of accountability for things. It's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot like a lot of politicians uh, when they don't want to be held accountable for certain things that they did wrong that came to light. Mm. The thing about Facebook that I've found is that we keep trying to, like, they're not very forthcoming with things, and users keep figuring out strange shifts in the privacy statements that are just rewritten without anybody really knowing. Um, their data being sold, weird ads then coming up and being bombarded with things. And it's it's kind of like when we signed up for our Facebook accounts, none of that existed. So no. we've just had to like, mm. that, that wasn't the original user agreement. And it's just shifted and evolved over time, basically without our express permission. So yeah. I think that the issue is that we keep trying to catch Facebook. Or like we, we keep having to catch Facebook. Yeah. And it's not even like we're looking for it. It just comes to like, you're like, oh. That just happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. But speaking yeah. of just catching them in general, so the whistleblower, Frances Hogan, and her team, they're saying that they're not looking to shut down Facebook. Instead, she argues that Facebook has the potential for good, and if the company were to address the concerns which Hogan has brought to public's attention, she would even go as far to work there again, if given the chance. So, in your opinion, what kind of benefits can Facebook create? Well, look, we all have a Facebook account. I mean, yeah. most of the population does. We all use it, even if we're not um, actively, using actively it for that engaged, matter. but yeah. we like having it. And there's many mm -hmm. reasons for this. We have a lot of our network on there. Mm -hmm. Often, often more and more millennials, we live away from home in, in areas that were isolated away from family. It's a great way to keep in touch with people. It's a great way to spread information, keep your network updated. And it, it's, it's meant as a connection tool. Um, so in that way, it's it's very positive. Yeah, no, that's true. I I live away from home, and it's great to be in touch with family members. You may not talk to them all the time, but at least you you can scroll and see what they what they've been yeah, up to at least, right? What's going on with their life? Yeah. And I also tend to really love Facebook Marketplace. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Crazy I things find you can find great, on there. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. a great way to connect with people around yeah. your community because you can see what's available and there's people around yeah. and it fills a need without having to put it in a landfill. So things like that are very useful about Facebook. Yeah. So although Hagen is urging Facebook to implement changes, mm -hmm. but we know with any whistleblower situation, it's not a guarantee, right? So in your opinion, will they change? Or will we find ourselves discussing another Facebook scandal a bit down the road? Probably both. <laughs> true, actually. Yeah. Very true. Okay, so in your opinion, what does Facebook need to do to create safer platforms for users? Well, for Facebook to create a safer platform for their users, I think they need to be a little bit more forthcoming and um, transparent about their implementation standards, which is currently only internal. Uh, to employees and it's a little bit vague and it changes a lot it is the implementation standards are then sanitized and kind of made a little bit more palatable and put out as the community guidelines or the community standards mm -hmm. that you find hidden in your user agreements yeah it's not hidden great. being the word I think that's yeah, one thing that needs to be a, careful with like, right they would argue that it's not hidden but it's not readily available yeah like Unless someone were to sit down and actually look for it, read them. Which, yeah, exactly. yes, it, there, the onus is on the user. It is a yeah. free platform. We are mm. selling our data to them, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. Like essentially, we are, yeah. we are part of. We're, you know, um, there's a whole other discussion there about yeah, for what sure. it actually costs you to be on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I think that the algorithm needs to get a little bit more specific and start to take into consideration the safety and the mental well-being of its users. I think that they've been preying off of our vulnerabilities and insecurities, which works kind of short term. But as we can see, the, the rates in depression have skyrocketed in mm -hmm. everybody. It's, it's a known fact that social media is, is a huge contributor to depression. Mm. And uh, that's part of, partly because of the algorithm. Now, if the algorithm, if we could shift it and use those same tools that are preying on our insecurities and use them to help build us up and educate us, I think that that would create a very nurturing environment. And it could also be very, very good for business because it, it influences a society that's healthy and thinking smart and well and, and bettering themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And with those words, that was Ava Blackwell with myself for today's discussion. Thank you so much for joining me, Ava. 
Thank you for having me, Simone. And thank you to our viewers for joining in today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the bell notifications to stay up to date on all our latest content.